In addition to a future commercial crew mission, our administrator discusses the budget request for NASA, and NASA's deputy administrator nominee appears before the Senate. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron has been assigned to our SpaceX Crew-3 mission to the International Space Station, expected to launch as early as October 23rd. She will join NASA's Tom Marshburn and Raja Shari and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. This is SpaceX's third crew rotation mission to the station for our commercial crew program. NASA Administrator Senator Bill Nelson testified during a May 19th virtual House hearing on the President's fiscal year 2022 budget request for the agency. The $24.7 billion funding request supports a wide range of NASA programs and activities. This is an exciting time for NASA. We are having a lot of things happen just in this next year. We launch the largest, most powerful rocket ever, the SLS. Uh, in its first uh, maiden flight. If that were not exciting enough, uh, later in the year, we're going to launch the James Webb Telescope, which is going to replace the incredible Hubble Space Telescope. It will peer out into space, uh, capturing the light from far distant galaxies. He also pointed to other upcoming milestones for the agency in science, STEM education, aeronautics, and more. On May 20th, former NASA astronaut Pam Melroy, the president's nominee to be NASA's next deputy administrator, appeared before the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation during a confirmation hearing on Capitol Hill. I've worked in aerospace for my entire career and have experience in each of NASA's four mission areas. If confirmed, I'm ready to help Administrator Nelson lead and manage NASA on day one. Melroy, a veteran of three space flights, logged more than 38 days in space and is one of only two women to command a space shuttle. On May 20th, engineers at our Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia, wrapped up the latest series of water impact drop tests for NASA's Orion spacecraft. The test series was designed to provide a better understanding of what Orion and its crew may experience during splashdown water landings at the end of future Artemis moon missions. Data from the tests are also used to help verify that Orion fulfills structural design requirements ahead of Artemis II, our first Artemis mission to the moon with astronauts. Engineers at our Stennis Space Center conducted an RS-25 engine test on May 20th, continuing the latest test series in support of development and production of these engines. Four RS-25s will power our Space Launch System rocket during future Artemis missions, including flights that will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon. NASA recently flight-tested the Airborne Location Integrating Geospatial Navigation System, or ALIGNS, in preparation for future acoustic validation flights of our X-59 Quiet Supersonic Technology airplane. ALIGNS will help a chase aircraft outfitted to gather acoustic data on these supersonic flights move into various positions relative to the X-59 to collect the most accurate data. These acoustic validation flights are designed to confirm that the sonic thump created by X-59 during flight is as quiet as it's designed to be and not as loud as a typical sonic boom. Our Advanced Air Mobility National Campaign wrapped up another round of integrated dry run testing at our Armstrong Flight Research Center in California using a helicopter as a stand-in for an urban air mobility vehicle. These future vehicles might transport people or cargo in the airspaces over urban areas. NASA, the Federal Aviation Administration, and partner companies are combining efforts to create a safe new air transportation system for these vehicles. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov.